Are you excited to be in God's house today? Amen. It's always a, a good day when you have the opportunity to, to come and to, to worship the Lord. Uh, I know as the day today, or today is a day, too, that a lot of you are excited about football. I bet y'all didn't think you were going to hear anything about that today. Uh, some of you could, could care less. Uh, some of you, until I put that up there, didn't even know who was, who was playing in the Super Bowl. Some of you still don't know. Um, today's a day when, when people around our, our, our nation are excited about football. Uh, today's a day when Tanya and I decided on the way here who, who we would uh, back. It, it made it a little more exciting if we didn't choose the same team. We don't uh, uh, watch a, a whole lot of, of NFL football, and the team that, that Tanya likes the most is, is not, not there. So we had to choose a new team. So I, I picked New England, and I had good reason. It's because I've been to their stadium, and, and I want to tell you, they have a little restaurant on the side of their stadium. <laughs> at Patriot Stadium, and, and man, they have an awesome hamburger there, okay? So she, uh, on the way here, she, she read some stats to me, and she began to whine and, and make excuses already. So this, uh, this afternoon will be a, a, a fun time for us and, and uh, to see the, the teams play. And I know many of you, again, some of you, you, you could care less. Some of you will be doing different things, and some of you maybe even be uh, watching uh, together. But for a lot of folks, this is a day where they really get excited about football. They really get passionate uh, about football. As a matter of fact, yesterday uh, I was tagged numerous uh, times uh, on a post that said, you should be as excited about church as you are about the Super Bowl. So when your pastor makes a point this Sunday, pour Gatorade over his head. Well, I've been watching. I only found one that's coming. I'm glad that's good and cold. I'm probably going to drink that. And, and Donnie began to make some threats out there, and I explained to him that he didn't really have to worry about me, but Jay Cobb only has one duty today, and that's to make sure Donnie don't pour that on my head. Uh, my response yesterday was, though, that if, you know what, if, if, if Gatorade being poured over my head gets folks excited about the Lord, bring on the Gatorade. And if I thought today that, that that's what it, what it took to get you excited about the Lord, then I'd let Donnie come up here and make Jay uh, stay out there. But uh, I believe that, that we, uh, we all understand that, that we do have something to be excited about. I think it was pretty interesting that, that Donnie would pick a, a, a red uh, bottle of Gatorade because, you see, it's not pouring this red bottle of Gatorade over my head that ought to get us excited it's the red shed blood of Jesus Christ poured over me and over my sins and covering my sins that ought to get us excited this morning. Folks, we ought to be excited about our relationship with God. We ought to be excited about God the creator who created the whole world would choose to love us enough that he wants to have a, a, a relationship with us. That ought to be exciting. I got a little little video up there. Mr. Tom, if you can play that video. If you watch this video, you see some of the excitement that we have about, uh, about football games. This is a high school football game.
say, first of all, there is absolutely nothing wrong with getting excited about a football game. I tell you what, I love going to a South Haven High School football game. I, it was a long time ago. I played a little football there, and I tell you, I really appreciated uh, my grandma even used to come, knowing that my grandma, grandmother was up there uh, uh, cheering for me. And, and, and I still go today, and I, I, when we do go, I, I love the excitement, and it takes me back, and I love seeing the, the players out there on the field. There is nothing wrong with that. But if we were to stop and think, what if, what if we were to get as excited about God, about church, about worshiping, about praising, about uh, witnessing? Wait a minute. What if we were excited even about tithing? What if? What if we, what if we were excited about all these things about, about God? And we talk about being excited about tithing. I heard uh, uh, something at a, at a conference that uh, Gary and I went to this weekend uh, where they said, what if you found out that, that your church had this, this big um, mission thing they wanted to carry out, and the cost of that event was the exact amount of your season tickets for your SEC team? Man, that'd be, that'd be a tough decision for some of us. I don't have season tickets for anybody, so it wouldn't be real hard for me, but I'm not saying you can't have season tickets, but our relationship with God that, that makes us excited is one that, that we want to give all that we have for God because God has given all that he has for us. Today, again, is a, a kind of a, a little different kind of a topical uh, based on, on one verse of Scripture. And that verse of Scripture is, is found in Luke 10, 10, 27. And here we find a, a, a guy who's come up to Jesus, and he's basically saying, Jesus, what's the most in, important thing for us to do? Jesus answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, love God with everything you have. I'm going to tell you, when you love something that much, you get excited about it. I tell you, there's a, there's a young couple here today, I won't point them out, but a young couple that's, that's going to get married not too far out, and I, I love seeing uh, pictures of them when they, they post stuff on Facebook and, and just how they, they treat one another. You can tell they're truly excited about being in the uh, the presence of one another because they love each other. Some of y'all used to be that way with your spouse. But when we really, when we really love something, we get excited about it. Imagine the, the, the things that we could do, again, with our worship and our witnessing and our, our ministry and, and, again, even our tithing, the things that, that we could do if we were truly excited about God. Dwayne and I were, were talking about a while ago that, uh, you know, do people show up for, for church expecting God to do something amazing, or do they show up to church to come in and sing a few songs, hear a sermon, and, and go home? Well, I think in God's church, it's, it's a mixture. Folks, we should always show up and, and arrive with the anticipation of, of God Almighty showing up, and when God shows up, that ought to be something exciting, and when God shows up, big things happen. I pray that you've come today with the, the anticipation of, of God doing something exciting. And I'm not talking about you sitting in the back watching something. I'm talking about God doing something exciting right here. See, I believe the church is, is not as effective as it is today because we're no longer excited about the things of God. We're not doing what, what Jesus said. You shall love the Lord your God with, with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and, and all your mind. Folks, if we love God that way and loved him passionately, man, we'd have some excitement in our life, some excitement in our, in our Christian walk. We've been studying the, the book of uh, Ephesians on Wednesday nights, and, and we've been talking a lot in, uh, here recently about uh, the verse that says, for us to walk worthy of our calling. Walking worthy of our, of our calling, and what makes our calling as Christians so important is, is who it is that, that calls us. You know who it is that calls us? God. God who created the, the whole world. God the creator of, of everything. And, and God has called us and he's equipped every single one of us to be part of the, the body of Christ. And as part of the body of Christ, we ought to be excited to get to, to carry out the things that, that God has, has given us to do in our walk. That would certainly, if we, we stop and think what God has called us to do, and if God calls us, he equips us, that definitely makes us 
want to walk worthy. And again, when he equips us, he equips us with his power. You know, we talked about, back there on Wednesday nights, about how uh, uh, a calling sometimes, who it comes from, makes it so much more important. And, and for us, our calling comes from God. But what if you got a, a call from the president? If the president of the United States, whether this one, the last one, whichever one you support, but just the person in that office were to call you and say, you know what, I got a mission for you. It's a matter of national security, and I need you to carry this out. I need you to do this. I need you to, to make sure this is the most important thing in your life. And I know what you do. I know that 99% of you, you would do it. It's a matter of national security. Folks, God has given you a call. God, the creator of all, has given you a calling, and it's a matter of eternal security. If we don't live out and walk worthy of the call that, that God has called us to and, and be excited about doing the things that God has equipped us to do and empowered us to do, that eternal security for some folks, it can be, our, our, it can be ourselves. It can be our, our neighbors. It can be our family. God's called us all to do, to do certain things, and just the simple fact that God called us, that ought to excite us. And again, we are to, to love God with, with everything that we have. God don't like us to, to, to walk and to live and to, to serve half-heartedly. Colossians 3.23 says, Whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men. Folks, everything you do, you ought to do excitedly and do it as if you're doing it for God himself because it's God that's placed you where you are. And again, if you're where God has placed you, if you're living in his will, then God has equipped you to do the things that come before you. Being excited about God is, is certainly not something that if you walk out of here today and, and God does do something in your heart and you walk out of here acting excited about God this week, man, that's probably not going to be real accepted outside the church. Being excited about God is not socially acceptable in our country. You can be excited about every single thing that goes on in our country and everybody loves it and encourages it, but don't go out and be excited about God. Folks, don't let the world tell you what to be excited about. Whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men. I pray today that you, you think about the things that God has, has put before you and that you be excited about it. If you were to leave here today and, and go and, and put on your, your Facebook and say, man, God showed up at church today, God did this. You know, I've, I've been praying for some time and, and God's doing some things in, in my life and, and maybe you, you posted some, some pictures and, and, and different things. Or, you know, you got a lot of folks out there that, they might not defriend you, but they're going to hide your post so they don't even have to see all that because they don't want to see it. But I tell you, and I got nothing against Garth Brooks. I like some of his songs. I used to be a big Garth Brooks fan. I know a lot of people that, that went to that concert last night. It was all over Facebook, and that was accepted. And I'm going to tell you, if we walk out of here today and we go and, and put our heart out and we begin to share the gospel and put things about God, the world's not going to be near as excited as they were about that concert last night. Again, we saw people excited about a, a, a football game. Nothing wrong with that. But on the flip side of that, we ought to be excited about God. Romans 12.1 says, Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual forever. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor. Folks, keep the fires of God going in your life. Stay close to God. Stay walking in close communion. Let the Spirit live through you. Be excited about God and what He's, what he's done in, in your life. You know, we're, we're all human here today. And for each and every one of us, including your pastor, there are times that, that we go through where sometimes we begin to lose some of that excitement. You know, when we lose that excitement, we're not near as effective for God. Donnie, again, I'm really excited that this is cold because I thought I was going to be drinking hot Gatorade up here. 
There are a couple things that I just want to point out today that maybe you'll see, maybe it's your life, things going on with you that are, are, are keeping you from um, all the excitement that maybe you could have about your relationship with God. One of the first things I want to point out is a, a lack of proper prioritization, a lack of, of proper priorities in our schedule. I mean, one of the first things we talk about all the time is that we're all so busy. And, you know, that is the case. For some of us, we, we are overworked. Some of us are, sometimes we get to a point where we're even overworked in, in doing the things of God. We're overworked in, in giving and helping and, and sharing and, and serving. You're always doing things for others. You're always helping, and, and you're doing it nonstop to where it, even that has began to consume you. You begin to, to get to a point where maybe you've got compassion fatigue and, and maybe you hadn't get, quit completely serving, but maybe you've reached that point where you really just don't even care anymore. Folks, that's a, that's a problem. God has remedies uh, for that. We should not be overwhelmed in our service for God. When we, when we reach that point where we have this compassion fatigue and we've, we've really chose to, to over-serve and we're not giving our, ourselves the, the rest and the time to, to recharge that we need, then we're not real effective for God. Some people are the exact opposite of that. Some people, people attend church every time the doors are, are open. They, they attend conferences. They're reading their Bibles. They're involved in all types of studies, uh, all this stuff. But then they're not giving anything back. They're taking all that in, but they're not doing anything with it. All this stuff that they're studying is not having any effect on their life. James 2.17 2, says, To him who knoweth to do good and doeth it not is sin. Folks, as you study word and study God's word and, and you come to, to know him more, you understand that, that God has given us all ministry opportunities and we're, we're all equipped for different things. We're all called to be a, a, a part of the body of Christ. So I encourage you, don't just, just sit idly by. Being a, being a Christian and being a part of a, a God's church, being a part of the church body is, is not a calling to be a, a spectator. And again, why is it in, in all churches that like 30% of the, the people do all the work? And I'm not just talking about stacking chairs. I'm talking about ministry opportunities. God has called each and every one of us in different ways. And I, I pray that you'll find a way to, uh, to plug in. Remember, to him who knoweth to do good and do it not is sin. I'm not being legalistic in that either. I, I want you to understand that it has to do, uh, going back around, that when we love God with everything that we have, we want to give him everything we have. We want to allow God to, to work through us. Jesus said, if you'll love me, you'll keep my commands. Because if you've truly surrendered, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steer right there for just a second uh, away from where I was even going. This is uh, something that was shared. As I said, Gary and I went to a, a men's conference in, uh, at Bellevue this weekend, and by the way, for you nine Ole Miss fans, I'll say one thing for their coach. Coach Freeze brought the gospel Friday night. God was in the house, like the team, don't like the team. That man brought Jesus. Jesus spoke through him, and we saw multiple people get saved Friday night. 1,400 men at a conference. It was pretty uh, um, amazing. But one of the things that was, was shared there, I, I truly believe, and I believe it needs to be shared here this morning, part of the problem, I think, with the church is the church is filled with people who have, who have confessed Jesus in their heart. They've confessed Jesus in their mouth that, that Jesus is God's son. They know who Jesus is. But that's as far as it went. And now understand this morning that, that just knowing who Jesus is, man, there's no more Satan knows who Jesus is. His demons know who Jesus is. We, that's not me. That's in God's word. But we need to make sure that there has been some point in our life and that we're still walking and, and living that way every day, that the confession that we've made is Jesus as Lord of our life. 
that we are willing to, to be the, the bond servant of Christ, that we're willing to, to serve God because he is our master. And when he is our master, that means that we put self up on a shelf and we let God do all this stuff in our life and to work through us. And there's no better life that you can have than, than living a life where, where Jesus is Lord of your life, living under his, his lordship. I pray this morning that, that every single one of us here today will, will make sure that, that that's where we are, that we, we have truly made Jesus uh, Lord of our, of our life. And when we've made Jesus Lord of our life, then these priorities of, of scheduling, of whether we're not doing enough or we're doing too much, you know what? God takes care of all that. It's not for me to tell you you're not doing enough or you're doing too much. It's, it's not for you to decide. It's for God to decide. Let God work through your life. You've got to have a balance. 1 Timothy 4, 7 says, Take the time and trouble to keep yourself spiritually fit. Folks, there has to be a, a mixture. I found myself Friday in need of a spiritual recharge. I praise God that, that God had put on Gary's heart to invite me to go to this with him and my batteries got recharged. My excitement about, about God was, was restored. Another thing this morning that will, will take away our uh, excitement about God is, is hidden sin. Hidden sin, sin that, 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 that's, that's there in our life and uh, it's unconfessed, it robs us of our joy. You know, when we're, we're, we're walking around and, and we have this sin in our life, and, and, and again, sometimes it, it may be that sin that on the outside we say, well, you know, it's, it's not that bad. Everybody's doing it. Everybody in the world does that. It's not that bad. But then when we, we get alone and we, we stop and think that, and I know that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. I know that's not walking worthy of my calling. And I know that if I, if I love God with everything that I have, that I don't, I don't need to continue in this. What we need to do then is we need to confess that sin to God. We need to give it to him. We need to be willing to, to repent, to completely, if the sin's over here, God's over here because he has nothing to do with sin. If we're over here, we need to put away and we need to turn to God and say, you know what, God, that's a sin and, and I've been doing it. And I can't put it away on my own, but I'm turning to you today, God. And God, I want you to take that out of my life because I want to live for you. I want to live completely for you. I want to give you all. I want you to be Lord over my life. God, forgive me for that sin. Folks, when we get rid of those things like that, that's when we can walk with excitement about God. That's when we can get up on Sunday morning and even be excited about coming to church. Folks, with that, that sin like that is, is guilt. Satan loves to, to guilt us. It's a result of our, of our sin. Psalm 38, 4 and 6 says, My guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. And it also says I'm bowed down and I'm brought low. Folks, sometimes we need to just put that stuff away and confess it to God. I pray today if, if, if maybe there's not been a lot of joy in your life, certainly not a joy, a, a, a lot of joy or excitement about the things of God. Maybe you're just doing church. And I pray today that God speaks to your heart and the Holy Spirit re reveals to you those things that you need to confess, that you need to repent from, that, that you need to turn from, and that you can have excitement about God. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he that is God, if we confess our sins, he can be trusted to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Folks, you can't, you can't fix that sin on your own. You can't overcome it on your own. Jesus has already paid the price. We're almost done. The next one I want you to think about this morning, things that will, will rob your, your joy, rob your excitement about the things of Christ, is conflict. Conflict destroys our excitement. And some of you know what I'm talking about. You, you get up in the morning, man, and you, you're on fire for the Lord. You've had that prayer time, and, and maybe you get up and you say, God, I, I want to give you my, my, my full self today. 
God, I, I just surrender to you, Jesus, be Lord of my life. Everything's good. You get into the word, you read, God speaking to you, you walk out, and you ain't even made it out of the bathroom, and you done got in an argument with your spouse. And y'all don't turn and look at your spouse because it might be your fault. Or maybe you made it all the way out of the house, and you made it to work. And man, there's that same person that always starts it. And there comes the conflict. Folks, conflict will rob you of the joy and excitement of serving a risen Savior. You got to put that stuff aside. Conflicts robs our, our passion. How do we how do we avoid that completely? We can't. Let's be real. The world's made up of imperfect people. The world's made up of, of sinners. But if we have a relationship with Christ, then we should be we're sinners saved by grace. And as sinners saved by grace, even when we enter into those conflicts, there are things that that we can do. Job 5.2 says, resentment destroys the fool and jealousy kills the simple. Job 18.4, you're only hurting yourself with your anger. Maybe you're here today and maybe, maybe you walked in the door out there angry this morning. Maybe you've got some resentment going on in your life. Folks, I, I promise you, it's robbing you of your joy. And the anger you have, the other person may not even know, but you know what? You being angry ain't affecting them one bit. But it's robbing you of the excitement that you could have in the things of God. You have to, you have to let it go. You have to let that resentment go. You have to let that conflict go. Whatever it is, and maybe you're saying, but you don't understand what they did. Well, it's not up to you to, to take care of them. And we talked about forgiveness a couple of weeks, and you understand that, that we are to forgive people. And sometimes that simply is a, a situation where you can't take, take care of, of what's taking place, but you give it to God. And you say, God, you know what? In my heart, for the things that have happened, God, I, I forgive them, and I give it to you. Folks, and then, then you can be excited about God. I pray today, if you're here and, and you deal with, with anger problems, and I believe, in, and, and, and you know, there's even Christians that need anger management conflict, but I believe a whole lot of it could be fixed if we just give it to God. If we remembered that how much God had to love us to forgive us of who we are and of the sinful lives that we live. Another thing that causes problems is that you don't have enough support in place. You don't have enough support in place, so you lose your, your excitement for God. Again, I, I know that there are people that will say that you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Well, I believe that. Jesus Christ is the only thing that, that, that gets you into heaven. Jesus Christ is the only way you can be saved. But I believe that when you truly are excited about Christ and you, you realize the, the sacrifice that, that he made for us, that you want to be around God and God's house and, and God's people. And when I talk about this support, I, I'm just not talking about just Sunday morning service. I'm saying we need to spend some time with God's people. And that's not just my opinion. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 4, 9, and 10, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. For if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. But woe to the one who falls when there is not another to lift him up. Folks, I encourage you. You know, I talk about our, our lift groups over and over and over, and I encourage you. And, and some of you, you hear that and you say, man, I, I'd like to get involved in one of those today. Well, what about today? What about today? Talk to these people. Brother, Brother Clay is here. Brother Sterling is, is here. Talk to them about their groups. Tell them, I want to know when you meet, where you meet. It's in your bulletin. Show up. Go to that. Invite some of these other people when you walk out today. You know, we got several hours before the football game starts. Invite somebody to church. Get to know somebody. Spend some time with other Christians. You need that support. Hebrews 10, 24, and 25, let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Let's not giving up meeting together and let us encourage one another. 
Folks, we should be looking for folks to encourage, to help, to, to build up. Because you know what? Them same folks that you're encouraging, building up, they may be the very ones that need to be there for you when you fall. When we're doing that, then we can, can be excited. Be excited about God. And then we can keep our batteries charged. And when our batteries are charged... We can be excited about the Lord. Exodus thirty-one fourteen. you must worship only the Lord, for he is the God who is passionate about his relationship with you. God is passionate about his relationship with you. God, the again, the, the creator of all, said that over and over. God who, who created everything is passionate about his relationship with you. There's none greater than God. There's none, none before God. There is no other God. There's only one God. And God is passionate about that relationship with you. He is so passionate about his relationship with you that he was willing to send his son, Jesus, to die on the cross for you. Again, I, I don't know how you can have a, a greater love than that. The love that Jesus had for you, that, that he gave himself for you. The Bible says there is no greater love. Jesus gave himself for you so that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I pray this morning that if there's anything in your life that, that's blocking out your excitement about God, anything that's coming between you and him, that, that you'll let God reveal that to you this morning and that you'll work that out. Most importantly this morning, I pray that, that every single one of us will consider our eternal salvation this morning. You know, I sent a little joke. I told Jeremy and, the, and, and Steve and them in the text this morning, they had, you know what, some folks will die that I said that, you know what, sometimes we get mice in our houses and they die. Hey, sometimes they get in the church too. So I thought I would be funny this morning. And uh, I don't have my phone, but I'll just have to tell you what I said. I got a text this morning. They were letting me know that uh, uh, it appears as though maybe a mouse had died somewhere. Uh, if you guys back there in that corner smell something, it's not the people around you. It was here before you got here. So I thought I would be funny and preacher-like, so I responded and said, uh, and there was a group of us in that, that text, and I said, you know, I don't, I don't know much about that mouse. I don't know whether he was a good mouse or a bad mouse. But I do know that apparently it's a dead mouse. And I hope that that mouse was prepared for what happened. I hope he was prepared to die. And maybe he was. I don't know if he was or not. Maybe his, his family members told him about death. Maybe his friends, maybe his, his colleagues at work told that mouse about death. But most importantly, I hope this morning that, that somebody has told you and somebody has told your family members that, you know, one day death is going to come for us all. And it's so important that, that we be prepared for death. And the only way to be prepared for death and eternity is to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible makes it pretty clear that there are only two eternal destinations, and it's heaven and hell. And because of the sin committed by, by Adam and Eve and inherited all the way down to us, the sin that's in our lives, well, we've already got things taken care of to go to hell one day. But God said, you know what? I created them in my image. I created them to have a relationship with them, and I love them. But somebody's got to pay the price for their sins, and God said, I love them so much, I'm going to send Jesus. Jesus who didn't deserve it. Jesus who had never committed sin. I'm going to send Jesus to shed his blood to give his life for theirs. And Jesus did that today. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. This morning, I pray that you understand that it's not about you being a better person and being a, a worse person. There's nothing you can do to, to earn your way into an eternity in heaven. There's something you can do today to, to work your way in, in, into an eternity in hell, and that is to do nothing today. But today, if you're not sure where you would spend eternity, I hope you understand that God loves you. And God made a way for you to be forgiven. And it's a free gift. All you have to do is say yes. Don't just confess who Jesus is, but confess him as Lord of your life this morning. Ask him to save you. And if you'll do that, I promise you'll have something to be excited about.
Would you stand and pray with me?